Imagine a world born of fire and pressure. Picture a crucible, glowing with the white-hot fury of a miniature sun, filled with a liquid river of molten steel. In one corner this liquid fire is poured into a mold, a patient vessel waiting to give the metal its new shape. In another, a colossal press, a monster of hydraulic power, waits to slam down with thousands of tons of force. This is the fundamental choice every great builder faces, to shape by flow or to shape by force. People often ask me which one is better, and my answer is always the same, better for what? So, what exactly is casting? At its core, it's beautifully simple. You take a material, usually metal, you heat it up until it melts into a liquid, and then you pour that liquid into a mold. Think of making ice cubes in an ice tray. You pour liquid water into a mold, let it freeze, solidify, and then pop out your finished ice cubes. The most common method is sand casting. You take special fine grain sand mixed with a bonding agent, and pack it tightly around a pattern which is a replica of the final part. For more detailed or complex parts, you might use investment casting, also known as lost wax casting. It's an amazing process for creating incredibly intricate shapes. The beauty of casting lies in its freedom. Because you're starting with a liquid, you can create almost any shape you can imagine. You can create hollow sections, intricate passageways, and detailed features all in a single step. However, this process isn't without its challenges. As the molten metal cools and solidifies, it shrinks. This can cause problems like porosity or even cracks if the cooling isn't controlled perfectly. Now let's switch gears and talk about forging. If casting is like sculpting with clay, forging is like being a blacksmith with a godlike hammer. Instead of melting the metal, you heat it until it's red hot and malleable, like a piece of taffy, but still in a solid state. This force can come from a massive hammer dropping onto the metal, or from a powerful hydraulic press that slowly squeezes the metal into a die. We're talking about forging presses that can exert forces of 50,000 tons or more. That's like stacking a column of 25,000 cars on top of the metal. Forging is best suited for parts that need to be exceptionally strong and durable. Think of things like crankshafts, connecting rods, wrenches, and hammers. These are parts that have to endure constant stress and impact. You're not just changing the shape of the metal on the outside, you're fundamentally changing its structure on the inside, which is the secret to its incredible strength. This is where things get really cool because the biggest difference between casting and forging isn't something you can see with your naked eye. It's what happens on a microscopic level, down in the grain structure of the metal. When you cast a part, the molten metal cools and solidifies, and these grains form in a random, jumbled pattern. Think of it like dumping a box of sugar cubes into a bowl. When you take a solid billet of steel and start hammering or squeezing it, you are physically deforming those microscopic grains and forcing them to align with the flow of the metal as it fills the die. This creates a directional grain flow, much like the grain in a piece of wood. This refined, directional structure is the secret sauce of forging. A forged steel part can have up to 27% higher tensile strength and 37% higher fatigue strength than a cast equivalent. In almost every head-to-head -head comparison, a forged part will outperform a cast part. A crack trying to move through a forged part has to fight its way across these tough, elongated grains, making the material far more durable and resistant to catastrophic failure. The automotive industry is a fantastic showcase of both. Your car's engine block is a masterpiece of casting. It's a hugely complex part with intricate water jackets for cooling, oil passages for lubrication, and precise mounting points. But inside that same engine you'll find the heart of the powertrain, and it's forged. The crankshaft, connecting rods, and pistons are forged because these components are under constant, violent stress. Now, let's look to the skies. The aerospace industry is where forging truly reigns supreme. A modern passenger jet is a collection of some of the most advanced forged components on Earth. The landing gear, which has to absorb the impact of a multi-hundred ton aircraft hitting the runway, is forged from high-strength steel or titanium alloys. The massive turbine discs inside the jet engines, which spin at tens of thousands of RPM in an incredibly hot environment, are forged. In space, there are no tow trucks. We don't use parts that might fail, we use parts that we know won't. The railway industry also uses a mix, cast iron for brake blocks, while the wheels and axles that bear the immense load are typically forged for maximum strength and safety. And why don't we just forge everything? The answer comes down to three things, cost, complexity, and precision. Creating the dies for forging is incredibly expensive, making it economical only for high volume production runs. 
These dies are machined from massive blocks of hardened tool steel and must be perfect. Making just a few forged parts would be prohibitively expensive. Casting excels at producing impossible geometries in a single piece, while forging is best for parts with uniform cross-sections that can be formed by squeezing metal. Let the geometry of your part be your guide. The first and most important question to ask is, what are the consequences of failure? For anything mission critical the scale immediately tips heavily in favor of forging. As a manufacturing expert once told me, you don't pay for strength you don't need. If a cast part is strong enough for the application, is cheaper to produce, and can be made into the complex shape you need, then it's the right choice. Ultimately, the choice is a balancing act. You have to look at the total manufacturing picture, from raw material to finished product, to make the smartest choice. So, after all this which process will build the future? The truth is, both will. We are living in a revolutionary time for manufacturing. New hybrid processes are emerging that blur the lines between casting and forging. There's a technique called thixoforming, where metal is heated to a state that's part liquid, part solid, like a slushy, and then forced into a die. This combines the complex shape capability of casting with some of the improved grain structure of forging. And then there's the real game changer, additive manufacturing or three-dimensional printing with metal. This technology offers almost limitless design freedom, allowing engineers to create internal structures and optimize geometries that are impossible to cast or forge. Will we one day three-dimensionally print a part with a custom-designed, forged-like grain structure? I absolutely believe so. I encourage you to keep exploring. Look into how gears are forged, or investigate how investment casting is used to make the single crystal turbine blades that are at the heart of every modern jet engine. The more you learn about how things are made, the more you appreciate the ingenuity and power embedded in the world all around you. So, what do you think? What process will dominate the next century of machine building? Which process do you think is the future of manufacturing? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one and love hearing your perspectives. If this deep dive into manufacturing blew your mind, smash that like button and subscribe for more engineering secrets explained. And don't miss our next video, watch how gears are forged with 1000 ton pressure. It's an incredible look at precision manufacturing that will leave you amazed. The conversation is just getting started.